There are three students, Peter, Everett, and Leah. One of them isn't a real person. Can you tell who? It's Everett. He doesn't cast a shadow. Look at three friends. Ariel Vandenberg, Danica Hall, and Simone. The first girl has a long one, the second girl has a short one, and the third girl doesn't use hers. What is it? It's their last names. Juniper loves sleeping. She sleeps 10 hours every day. Still, there's one month when she sleeps in total a bit less than during the other months. What is this month and why does this girl sleep less? It's February. There are just 28 or 29 days in this month, which means fewer nights. Andy and Carter went camping in the woods on the weekend. One week later, Andy came to the police. He said Carter had led him deep into the forest, and while Andy was sleeping, his friend left him there. Then Andy had to wander alone for a week until he found some road leading to civilization. He came to the police to report the accident immediately. Carter denied doing that, claiming that they had come back home together. Who's lying? Andy is too clean-shaven for a person who has just got out of the woods. I'll bet he made up his story. Esme was walking in the forest. Once it got dark, she headed home but got lost. She was wandering around the forest until she found the witch's house. She came in, said hi to the witch and her grandson, who was still staying with his granny, and petted the cat. The witch had another riddle for Esme to solve if she wanted to get out. She wrote down a number. There were two special things about it. What were they? First, this number contains all existing digits. Second, they're put in alphabetical order. Mrs. Cooper was going to the bank when she passed out. Cece was passing by when she noticed the woman on the ground. She called the ambulance and the police. Soon, the woman came to her senses. But she found out that someone had stolen all her money. There were three suspects, Cece and two other pedestrians, Teo and Mason. Who is the thief? Look, there are two types of footsteps leading to the place where Mrs. Cooper is lying. One of them belongs to her, and the other was left by Cece. There are also two parallel straight lines, which must be the prints left by a wheelchair. So, the thief must be the man in the wheelchair, Mason. Mrs. Ford reported to the police that her neighbor, Anthony, had stolen her golden figurine. She said, I was upstairs vacuum cleaning when I heard someone enter the house. I walked up to the window and saw my neighbor leaving the house a half minute later. When I went downstairs, I saw that my golden figurine had been stolen. Anthony denied passing by Mrs. Ford's house that day. Who should the detective believe? He should believe Anthony. Vacuum cleaners are noisy, so Mrs. Ford couldn't possibly hear anyone enter her house. Cheryl was having a birthday party. She noticed that her brother was staying in his room with some girl, but she didn't know who it was. Cheryl got curious, so after they left, she sneaked into his room to look for some hints. There were three girls at the party, Jasmine, Willow, and Sylvia. Cheryl immediately guessed who her brother was dating. Can you figure it out? It's Sylvia. Look, there's a jacket in the room. Sylvia was wearing it at the party. Now I'll show you some pictures, and you'll need to understand what's wrong with them. Let's go! Here's the first one. The door hinges and the handle are on the same side of the door. Doors don't work this way. Here's another one. What's wrong here? The woman isn't wearing a necklace, but it's reflected in the mirror. And what about this one?
9 and 11 are messed up. It should be the other way around. Ah, this one should be easy, but keep your eyes wide open. Right, there's no red traffic light. Paris went on an expedition to a desert for a month. She didn't have a strong internet connection, so she couldn't talk to her boyfriend often. Still, one day, she managed to video call him. But that call didn't end well. The girl broke up with a guy. Why? Look at the background. It's nighttime for Paris' boyfriend, but he is obviously having dinner with some girl. There's a second plate and a glass with a lipstick print on it. Storm was walking with his friend in the park. Suddenly, it started raining, and they had to go home. Storm ran back as fast as he could because he didn't have a raincoat, an umbrella, or even a hood. Still, when he finally got home after running in the rain for 10 minutes, not a single hair on his head was wet. How is it possible? Storm was bald. Man. In an alternate reality, Mrs. Savad was trying to persuade her daughter Amy to go to a party. Amy wanted to do her homework instead. Weird, huh? Mrs. Savad bought Amy an amazing dress, but the girl still refused. It continued until her mom promised that if Amy went to that party, she'd let her do her homework 16 hours a day every day for another month. Later, Mrs. Savad left for her own party. When she returned, she realized that Amy hadn't left the house. How did she know? There's still a price tag on the dress, which means that Amy didn't wear it. Violet had a genius but crazy sister who was always making traps in the basement. One day, Violet went downstairs to get her laundry. As soon as she walked in, the door got locked and wouldn't open. There were three buttons. Violet knew that one of them would open the door, but the other two would electrocute her. Luckily, her sister had mercy. There was a hint. Which of the buttons will let Violet get out of the basement? If you put the letters in the right order, you'll see purple button written there. That's the one. Mrs. West came to the police station asking to check on her husband. She said that he was in his office when she called him. Suddenly, she heard her husband fall to the floor. And about 10 seconds later, he hung up without saying anything. She called him again, then she came to his office, but he didn't open the door. The detective arrived at the office and found Mr. West unconscious. The detective was sure that the man wasn't alone in the room when it all happened. Why? Someone had to hang up the phone. If the man had suddenly fainted, the phone would have fallen on the floor. You work in a baggage storage room at the airport. Three people come and give you their bags at the same time. Now, you don't remember who each bag belongs to. Take a look inside and try to figure it out. There's just one girl, so the bag with a dress inside probably belongs to her. The blind man doesn't need this mirror, which means that this bag must belong to the bald man. And the bald man doesn't need a hairbrush, so the third bag must belong to the blind man. Lilibet always wanted to have a cat, but her mom never allowed her to get one. Once, the girl found a kitten in the street and brought it home. She knew her mom would make her take it to the shelter, so she decided to hide the animal. Once Lilibet's mom walked into the girl's room and realized there was a cat living there. How did she know that? Look, the walls and the sofa are scratched at the bottom. Mrs. Jones was working a night shift. Her daughter, Emmeline, wanted a friend to stay with her. But Mrs. Jones didn't allow it because it was a school night. When the woman returned, she realized that Emmeline had still invited her friend over. How did the woman understand it? There's a pair of earrings in the bathroom. Mrs. Jones and Emmeline don't have their ears pierced, so these must belong to someone else. Daphne suspected that her boyfriend, Dashiell, had hacked her phone and was now reading all her messages. 
One day, Daphne and her friend Sophie decided to go to the park. Daphne invited her boyfriend too, so he could get to know her friend. When Dashiell arrived, Daphne broke up with him. Why? She didn't tell when they were going to meet, but Dashiell still arrived at the correct time. That's how she made sure he had indeed been checking her messages. Tony and Scarlett are best friends. They wanted to spend the summer together. Unfortunately, Scarlett's grandmother fell sick, and the girl had to go to another city for the whole summer to be with her. Tony missed her friend. That's why, from time to time, she walked past her house. In a couple of weeks, Tony realized that Scarlett had lied to her about staying with her grandma. She had been home all that time. How did Tony understand it? Look at the house. One day, the window is open, and the next day, it's already closed. Someone's definitely living there. Mr. York was a rich gentleman living in a mansion. Once, his brother came to visit him. The next day, Mr. York called the police and said that a very expensive golden cup had been stolen from his collection. The only other person in the house was his brother, so he must be the thief. The police didn't believe Mr. York. Why? The spot where the cup was supposed to stand was just as dusty as the rest of the shelf. It means that nothing had been standing there for a long time. And like always, crime doesn't pay. Okay, listen to me very carefully, my friend. Here's the deal. First, to steal the diamond, you need to get to a remote island. It doesn't exist on any map, and it's forbidden for ordinary people to be there. The diamond is in the heart of this place, inside a well-guarded deep underground bunker. It's impossible to get there through the main entrance. But lucky you, there's also a secret jail on the island. You can get there as a prisoner and then escape through the underground tunnel. That tunnel will lead you into the bunker. Then you should find the diamond. You'll have very little time for the whole operation. When you're done, a boat will be waiting for you in the southern part of the island. Do everything correctly and follow the plan, and then you'll encounter no problems. Got it? All right, let's go. You and other prisoners get into a helicopter and fly to the island. You're handcuffed. At one moment, the helicopter begins to shake. The pilot says you're falling. He puts on a parachute and jumps out of the helicopter. Take a look around and decide what to do next. Faster! You see the keys to your handcuffs hanging near the cabin. Then you get rid of the handcuffs. The prisoners ask you to release them too. But be careful, these people are dangerous. All three of them say they know how to fly a helicopter. Who will you believe? That guy with a tattoo with a helicopter on his leg. Maybe he's a good pilot. You remove his handcuffs and he admits he has lied. None of these people knows how to fly a helicopter. There's only one parachute left. The prisoner pushes you to the side, grabs the parachute, and jumps out of the falling helicopter. You decide to release the other prisoners too. What will you do next? Jump without a parachute? Try to land the helicopter on your own? The helicopter's pilot abandoned the vehicle because the landing was impossible. So you will not succeed either. You need to jump. You have been flying over the ocean, remember? Also, the helicopter is falling, so the height isn't that great. You jump into the water and swim toward the shore. Suddenly, you notice a shark's fin. It's quickly approaching you. What are you going to do? A. Try to swim to the shore as fast as possible. B. Don't swim anywhere and just float in the water. C. Dive and start waving your hands to scare the shark away. You need to stop. If you start swimming away, the shark will begin chasing you. Breathe in a lot of air and try not to make unnecessary movements. The shark will leave soon. But if it attacks, you'll have to attack back. Its gills and eyes are the animal's weak spots. Fortunately, the shark doesn't charge at you. It swims away, and you get to the shore safely. 
The island's guards are running out of the jungle. One of the prisoners who was with you in the helicopter is hiding in the bushes and invites you to join him. Where will you go? Let the guards catch you and take you to jail. Don't forget about your mission. They dress you in a yellow shirt and lead you away. You see many dangerous people. You're sitting at the table having lunch. There are three prisoners in front of you. One of them is going to escape. But who? That man with a book. A metal file serves him as a bookmark. Today, he will also try to escape. The underground tunnel leading from the prison to the bunker is located under the laundry room. You need to get out of your cell and get there. To do this, you have to get the metal file and pick the lock. Everyone goes out into the courtyard for a walk. You're following the man with the book. He sits down on the bench and hides the book under the seat. You need to distract him and get your hands on the book. You can use a basketball, dumbbells, or playing cards. What will you do? You can offer to work out with the dumbbells or play cards, but it will be difficult for you to get out of his sight. Start playing basketball. Throw the ball far away. The prisoner will run after it. Meanwhile, you'll take the book. So you grab the book but find no file inside. Instead of this, you find some money. It seems this guy has sold the tool to one of the other prisoners. You put the money in your pocket and look around the yard. Which of the prisoners can have the metal file? That guy is pressing his fingers to the sleeve of his shirt. Apparently, he's hiding the tool there. You're about to approach him, but one of the prisoners starts a fight. The guards are trying to prevent a riot. In all this chaos, someone hits you on the head and you lose consciousness. You wake up in a hospital ward. Oh no! You have almost no time left. The doors are locked. Several security guards are walking around. How can you get into the laundry room? In the corner, there's a huge cart with dirty laundry. Hide in there, and they'll take you to where you need to go. You hide among the dirty sheets. The cleaner takes the cart and transports you to the laundry room. He throws the linen into the washing machine and notices you. The cleaner is going to scream and call the guards. What will you do? You have some money, remember? You can pay for his silence. You move one of the washing machines and find a hatch under it. You climb inside and walk through the tunnel. It's very cold, wet, and dark here. Finally, you reach a small room. There are no windows and doors, only brick walls. What will you do? You can't go back. Among all these bricks, there's one sticking out of the wall. Try to push it. It worked! A secret door opens, and you step inside. You go down and find yourself in front of another iron door. You notice an oxygen tank with a mask lying nearby. You open the door and find yourself in an airlock room between two iron doors. One of the doors closes behind you. All the oxygen gets pumped out. You can't breathe, so you put on the mask. The second iron door opens, and you go inside. You see three tunnels. The first tunnel is filled with moving axes, blades, and other traps. High-voltage electric discharges flicker in the second tunnel. The third tunnel is burning with a bright flame. One of the threats is an illusion. Which tunnel will you choose? There's no air in the room, which means fire can't burn here. The flame is a hologram. You move on and find yourself in front of a dark room. It's so dark, you can't see what's inside. It seems to you that the diamond is there. Stop. 
What is this diamond? Who gave you this mission? What are you doing here? What's happening? At this moment, some unknown force pushes you forward. You step into the black void and fall. You find yourself floating in outer space. It's so cold and scary here. You feel tiny in the boundless universe. Suddenly, you see something shining. Is it a star or an asteroid? A bright light illuminates the black space around you. Good job, a heavy voice says. You reach out your hand and touch the light. At this moment, at a great speed, you start flying back through space and time. You're falling fast and land in a dirty room. Frightened, you get up and open the door. Oh, yes, sunlight! You finally get out of the bunker and find yourself on the island. There are two paths in front of you. One leads to the south, the other to the north. Which one will you choose? The boat is supposed to be waiting for you in the south, remember? You go through the jungle and find an old car. You start the engine and grab an MP3 player with headphones from the glove compartment. You drive along the road, listening to music, when you realize the brakes don't work. There are three ways ahead. A brick wall is waiting for you at the end of the first road. The second one leads to a swamp, and the third leads to a high hill with a cliff. Where are you going to drive? There's almost no time. Release the gas pedal and drive up the hill. The car will start slowing down, and soon you'll be able to get out of it. You go through the jungle and find yourself on the shore. There's an old motorboat on the sand. You push it into the water, start the engine, and get in. After traveling for some time, you see rocks with shipwrecks next to them. You slow down and hear beautiful singing coming from the rocks. The singing is beckoning, and you direct your boat right toward the rocks. You're quickly approaching the place and can do nothing to stop the inevitable. What will you do? You have the MP3 player you found in the car. You put on the headphones, turn on cool epic music, and travel away. You're heading toward sunset, toward new adventures. And now, let's check your points. 0 to 3 points. You definitely shouldn't go on dangerous adventures. You may be able to pass the first test, but you aren't likely to get through all the trials. 4 to 7 points. It's better, but you still lack confidence. You might panic in an extreme situation, and panic is the main enemy of any adventurer. 8 to 11 points. You're not afraid of danger. You always move forward with confidence. But you need to work on your attention to detail and your logical thinking skills to be able to always get out of trouble. 12 to 14 points. You're a real adventurer. You can handle not only exhausting challenges, but also survive inexplicable strange situations that would drive other people mad. <laughs> Imagine you are being interviewed for a job opening at one of the world's largest companies. I'm talking about Google, Microsoft, or even Elon Musk's SpaceX. But to get your dream job, you have to pass a very tricky entry exam. I've gathered some of the questions that are actually used in these tests. So put on your thinking hat, and don't settle for less than 100%. Good luck. We'll start out easy. The first riddle you need to solve is the two-jug riddle. Here's the drill. Your mother asks you to measure four cups of orange juice using two jugs. The thing is, you have a 20-cup jug and a 36-cup jug. How can you do it? You need to start by pouring the orange juice into the smaller jug. Then, pour all the juice from that jug into the 36-cup jug. This way, the empty space from the big jug would give you 16 cups. After doing that, you can fill the 20-cup jug using more fresh juice and pour that liquid into the 36-cup jug. This way, you'll fill the entire 36-cup jug. And what is left in the smaller jug is the four cups of juice your mom asked for. Clever, huh? Moving on to the second round. Say your room has three switches, 
and one of these switches is for the fan in the room next door. You cannot see whether the fan is on or off unless you come out of your room, got that? Okay, so I need you to figure out what's the minimum amount of times you need to go inside the room next door to identify the correct switch that turns on the fan. This is a little bit tricky, but here's the solution. The minimum amount of times you can go inside the room next door and still figure out the answer is one. Imagine you turned on the first switch in your bedroom and left it on for a bit. As soon as you turn it off, you quickly turn on the second switch and run to the room next door. If the fan is rotating slowly and is about to stop, that means that the first switch is the one that controls the fan. If the fan is running, then the second switch is the correct one. And if the fan isn't moving at all, then it was the third switch all along. Did you manage to crack this one? Hey, nobody said this was going to be easy. It's a mock job interview for a top-notch company after all. The third round is even trickier than the one before. An interviewer might ask you to solve this riddle to understand your pattern-finding capabilities. Let's say you were asked to watch a six-lane car track for the day. Your job is to spot the four fastest cars out of 36. How many races would you conduct to find that out? Here's what you could do. Conduct six different car races, grouping six cars per race. After you determine the winner of each of these races, you conduct another race with the six finalists. The winner of this race will be determined as the fastest vehicle of all. Then just place the second, third, and fourth cars according to how they performed in the last race. By the end of seven races, you'll have figured out the four fastest cars out of 36. Good for you if you figured this one out. For this next riddle, you need to think logically and mathematically. A queen needs to hire a worker for seven days to do a job for her. The queen pays in gold bars, but she must pay the worker every day at the end of his shift. If the queen is only able to make a maximum of two cuts in the gold bar, how can she pay the worker the correct amount of one-seventh of the gold bar at the end of each shift? Uh, let's see how this can work out. The queen makes two cuts in the bar, dividing it into three pieces. The first piece is one-seventh of the bar. The second piece is two-seventh of the bar. And the third one is four-seventh of the bar. After the first day of work, the queen gives the worker one-seventh of the bar as payment. On the next day, she gives him two-seventh of the bar and asks for the one-seventh piece in return. At the end of the third day, she gives the worker the smallest piece again. This way, he has a total of three-seventh of the gold bar on his hands. Then, after the fourth day, the queen takes away the first two pieces and gives the man four-seventh of the bar. At the end of day five, she gives the worker one-seventh of the bar again. And at the end of day six, she gives the worker two-seventh of the bar and gets the one-seventh piece back. On day seven, she pays him with the final one-seventh piece, and the deal is completed. Ready for the last round of the first level? If you've answered everything correctly so far, I dare to say you are a part of a very special group of people. Good luck with this next one. It will determine whether you'll move on to the second level. Two buses are driving toward each other at a speed of 40 miles per hour. They're separated by a distance of 40 miles. A bird is flying to and fro, landing on bus one, and then on bus two at a speed of 50 miles per hour. By the time the buses come across each other, how many miles will the little bird have flown? Math lovers, this one's for you. The first thing we need to find out is the time it would take for the buses to meet. To find that out, we should divide the distance between the buses by the combined speed of both vehicles. If they're both driving at 40 miles per hour, then their combined speed is 80 miles per hour. Since the distance between them is 40 miles, we divide 40 by 80. This will give us 0.5 hours or 30 minutes. To figure out the total distance traveled by the bird, we multiply the speed of the bird by the time it will take the buses to meet. And this would give us 50 times 0.5. So the correct answer is 25 miles. Phew, I'm tired just thinking of that little bird flying all those miles. 
Hey, if you've aced this test so far, congratulations. You've just unlocked level 2. The riddles will get more and more difficult, so keep your mind sharp. A tortoise is currently at the bottom of a 210 feet hill and is trying to reach the top. Every hour, the tortoise climbs 15 feet and slips down one foot. How long will it take the tortoise to reach the top of the hill? Here's the thinking behind this riddle. Every hour, our tortoise buddy climbs a total of 14 feet, right? Since it climbs 15 and slides down one foot. According to this, it will take the tortoise 15 hours to get to the top of that cliff, since 15 multiplied by 14 equals 210. This wasn't too bad, huh? Questions such as these ones allow interviewers to test your problem-solving abilities regarding numbers. You know, if you want to work at a space company, you should probably be very, and I mean very, good with numbers. This next riddle is one of Elon Musk's personal favorites. It's short, yet complicated. If anyone here dreams of becoming an employee at SpaceX, you better get this one right. Imagine you're standing on the surface of Earth. You walk one mile south, one mile west, and one mile north. You end up exactly where you started. Where are you? If you answered the North Pole, then you got it right. But the riddle doesn't stop here. If you weren't at the North Pole, where else could you be given the exact same instructions? Yup, the South Pole. Here's how this works. This riddle presumes that the world is a perfect sphere. And if that were the case, the only place where you could walk one mile south, west, and north, and end up in the same place is at one of the poles. Got it? To get to level three, you have to answer this riddle correctly. There are two strings in a room. All you know is that each string takes exactly one hour to burn. Your task is to time exactly 45 minutes, using the strings as your only source to find out the time. How can you do it? Here's how it goes. You should light both ends of the first string and one end of the second string. In 30 minutes, the first string would have burnt completely because it's burning twice as fast with both ends on fire. Then, you should light the second end of the second string. The second string would still have 30 minutes left to burn, but by lighting its other end, the rope will burn twice as fast, AKA in 15 minutes. Voila! You've timed 45 minutes without the help of any clock whatsoever. Hey, smarty pants, you've just made it to level three. If I were the interviewer, I would probably give you the job already. But just for the sake of it, be sure to answer everything correctly, okay? These final questions are way more job specific. As all questions in this video, they were used in real job interviews. So we're basically training you to ace your interviews. For example, if you were applying for a position at JP Morgan, this is the type of question you would have to answer. How many streetlights are there in New York City? Can you figure out the number before the time runs out? As impossible as this might sound to guess the answer without a Google search, what JP Morgan wants to test is your estimating abilities. Here's the logic. New York City boroughs have an ordered urban grid, so your first task would be to estimate the number of horizontal and vertical blocks in each borough. Then, estimate the number of streetlights each block may have. Multiply that number by five since New York City is made out of five boroughs. And then you'll have your number. If it's somewhere close to 300,000, then you got it right. If you were applying for a position at a healthcare company, you'd be faced with this fruity riddle. An apple costs 40 cents, a banana costs 60 cents, and a grapefruit costs 80 cents. How much does a pear cost? Yikes. I had to read it a few times before getting any idea of what to do with it. The key to answering this riddle is to focus on the vowels. If you charge 20 cents per vowel, the two vowel word apple will cost 40 cents. By the same logic, the three vowel banana will cost 60 cents and the four vowel grapefruit will be 80 cents. In this scenario, a pear will cost 40 cents 
And that's your answer. You've made it to the end of this test. Check your armpits. If you're sweating, that probably means you've done a very good job. To finish off, here's an interesting question a tech company asks their interviewees. How would you describe the internet to someone who has just woken up from a 30-year coma? Different from all the other questions, this one has no right or wrong answer. You might try to compare it with something that existed 30 years ago, for example. Or you might just go into Spielberg mode and describe this near sci-fi world we are living in nowadays. Either way, I hope you've got the job. Oliver is walking in the rain. Suddenly, he sees a woman without an umbrella or hat. But she's not getting wet at all. How is this possible? The woman is walking inside a covered area, such as a covered sidewalk. Four friends go hiking and take a picture by the lake. Can you spot anything weird? This guy doesn't have any reflection in the water. Sarah checks into a fancy hotel. She feels very hungry, but unfortunately Sarah missed the dinner hours. That's why she calls room service and orders a vegan dinner set. Fifteen minutes later, someone knocks on her door. She looks through the peephole first. Sarah. Oh great, a fake waitress! How did she know? The waitress is fake because she didn't know that Sarah ordered a vegan meal. Kelly and Kim start a quarrel on the plane. It's Kim's private jet, so she wants everything to be her way. But Kelly gets mad at her. She runs up to the exit door, opens it and jumps out. It happens so fast that the crew don't have time to do anything. Kelly doesn't have a parachute. She breaks her leg but survives. How come? The plane had already landed. Nick is driving down the road and his car runs out of gas. He sees a cabin in the woods and decides to ask for help. When he gets there, he finds three people inside. They offer to help him, but only if he agrees to stay there forever. Why? Nick stumbled upon a group of runaway criminals. They're afraid that he would tell others about their location. Early in the morning, Detective Robinson receives a call from his neighbor, Ethan. Ethan. Please, come as soon as possible. Someone attacked my wife. Robinson arrives at Ethan's house and sees this scene. Can you guess what happened to his wife? Take a look at the calendar on the wall. They pranked the detective because it was April 1st. The city has been taken over by zombies. Let's take a look at this group. Only one of these zombies is a male. Can you guess who? The first zombie is wearing a bra, and the second one has a badge with a female picture and name. Therefore, only the third zombie is a male. Tom works in a secret agency specializing in people with psychic abilities. He's having an interview with three people claiming to be superheroes. But only one of them really possesses some supernatural powers. Can you help him spot this person? Take a look at the third lady. She's holding her phone with the power of her mind without even touching it. Stella and Bella go on vacation. They take two pictures on the beach. Can you spot 10 differences between them? You can pause the video if you need additional time. Ready to see all the 10 differences? Here they are. Steve arrives at work and turns on the corporate laptop. Oh no, someone has changed the password. 
Steve looks around and finds a sticker with a clue. 32, 18, and 29. He enters the number, but it doesn't work. Can you help him crack the code? Steve should literally enter three twos, one eight, and two nines through underscores. 222, 8, 99. Gabriel is an art teacher. He enters the studio to check his students' work. One of these people is a ghost. Can you guess who? It's the model. She's posing for a portrait, but everyone sees through her. Dan wakes up in a creepy cage. He needs to figure out a five-number code to escape. He only has this picture as a clue. Can you help Dan crack the code? To solve this mystery, we need to count the number of legs that each object in this picture has. The human has two legs, the fish has zero, the ladybug has six, the dog has four, and finally the spider has eight legs. So the correct code is 20648. Alex went hiking and got lost in the woods. The sun had already set when he finally found a road. Three drivers stop and offer him a ride to the nearest village. Can you help Alex choose the safest option? There's a zombie arm sticking out of the second car's trunk, and the third driver has suspicious pointy ears and shiny eyes, so he's probably a werewolf. Therefore, Alex should probably trust the first driver. I'm very easy to lift, but very hard to throw. What am I? I'm a feather. Kim downloads a dating app hoping to find her true love. She likes these three men equally. They begin to chat and the guys send her some selfies. Each man claims to be single. But in fact, only one of them doesn't have a girlfriend. Can you guess who? Brian sent Kim a cute bathroom selfie. But take a closer look at his shelf. He has one male razor and another pink razor, which probably belongs to his girlfriend. So goodbye, Brian. Meanwhile, Kyle took a selfie in his bedroom. Luckily, he left the closet open so we could see his girlfriend's clothes and shoes. So only Harry is a single person, and Kim should give him a chance. Jenny goes for a walk to her favorite park, Suddenly, she gets attacked by a crowd of zombies. Jenny gets terrified and begins to run away. There are three possible routes in front of her, but only one of them will actually take Jenny to a shelter. Can you help her escape? Jenny should choose Route C. Ethan owns a successful flower shop, but today he's very upset. Someone has stolen all the red roses from the storage room. Ethan questions three suspects among his staff. Leah, the chief florist, says, I spent the whole day creating bouquets with pink lilies for a wedding ceremony. Donna, the manager, says, I don't know who stole the roses. I didn't even enter the storage room today. I was consulting our clients all day long. And finally, Mike, the florist assistant, says, Fresh red roses were delivered early in the morning. I brought them to the storage room. And I've never entered it again. Who's lying? Leah. There are no pink lilies in the bouquets that she made. Lauren changes a six-number password on the office door to avoid thefts. She leaves this little clue for all her colleagues. Bagel. Can you guess the correct code? To solve this mystery, we should calculate the number of each given letter in the alphabet. B implies 2, A implies 1, G7, and so on. So the final password is 217512. 
Helen meets a handsome guy at a supermarket. She falls in love at first sight. His name is Robert, and he came here with his sister. Can you guess which one of these ladies is his sister? It's the third woman. She's the only one who's shopping without a separate cart or basket because Robert carries it. The police officer is chasing Kendra who had just robbed a jewelry store. The teenager sneaks into the nearest school and the officer follows her. She notices Kendra's hoodie by one of the doors and enters the classroom. There she sees four students who look like Kendra. Can you decide who's the real robber? This one is Kendra. She has neither books nor pens on her desk. Let's go ahead and take a look at these two pictures. Can you spot 10 differences between them? Ready to see the solution? Here are the 10 differences. It's a Sunday afternoon. Most people are spending it at the local shopping mall. Nothing usually happens here. But suddenly a man snatches a woman's bag and runs away. The woman calls a security guard and yells, Don't just stand here! Go after him! But the thief has already disappeared into the crowd. Can you help the guard find the thief? He's over here. Sam gets promoted and throws a fancy party for his best friends. Josh, Kate, Brad, Bill, and Holly. Everything goes great. But the next morning, Sam finds out that someone broke into his safe and stole his family treasure, a golden egg. Sam questions his friends, but each swears to have nothing to do with the theft. The police officer looks through the pictures that Sam took yesterday. After comparing these two shots, he spots the thief. What about you? Yesterday, Holly was wearing a classy hat. In the first picture, the hat is pressed close to her head. And on the second one, the very same hat is much taller. That's because she hid the golden egg inside it. Violet returns from a business trip. She enters her office and sees a beautiful gift basket on her table. There's a love note from a secret admirer attached to the package. Violet gets very curious. She figures out three suspects and asks them just one question. Did you send me the gift basket? Liam replies, Nope, I would have sent you sunflowers instead. I know you love them. Jason says, I overslept today, and I've just arrived at the office, so I wouldn't have had time to prepare a surprise for you. And Kenny says, I didn't send the basket, but when I entered your room in the morning to put some documents on your desk, the basket was already there. Who's the secret admirer? The love note is written on a pink sticker. Kenny has similar sticker notes in his workspace, and his handwriting is very similar to the love note. Busted. Tyler receives a message from his new girlfriend, Kitty. She invites him over for dinner. Tyler has never been to her house yet. He takes his scooter and hits the road right away. But unfortunately, he gets lost on the way. His navigator breaks down and shows him three confusing routes. Can you guess what route leads to Kitty's house? Tyler should take the first route. Alex is heading to a family dinner, but he's really broke and he only has eight chocolates. He needs to divide them equally between his three sisters. How many cookies would each sister get? Zero. Alex has chocolates, not cookies. Nellie's father has five daughters. The name of the eldest daughter is April. The second daughter is May. The third one is June. And the fourth daughter's name is July. Can you guess the name of his fifth daughter?
Nelly. A gardening fair takes place in a village. The top five local gardeners show their best flowers. But one of them brought fake plants to prank the villagers. Can you spot the fake? Bumblebees fly around all the plants except for the fourth flower pot. Insects don't get attracted to these roses because they are artificial. Dylan is exploring a remote forest area. Soon he gets lost and has no idea where to go. Luckily he comes across a small cabin in the woods and sees a forester. Dylan. Hello, could you please tell me how I can get to the railway station? Forester. Go down this trail until you reach a crossroads. There, you'll see a rock with signboards. Just remember, the left one lies, and the right one tells the truth. Dylan follows his advice, and soon finds the rock. Can you guess which way he should go to reach the station? Since the left sign is lying, and the right one is the truth, Dylan should walk straight ahead. Claire puts on a classy white suit and goes for a walk. Suddenly a big dog pops out of nowhere and jumps on her. The dog stains Claire's outfit with dirty paws. She gets furious and yells, Whose dog is this? Can you spot the owner of this animal? It's the second lady. She's wearing the same collar as her dog, 